Raise your hand if you've ever played a game of D&D where the party had to infiltrate some kind of bad guy camp. Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. Possibly every campaign I've ever played in or run for D&D has involved at least one encounter or mission where the party has to go into some kind of bad guy camp to get information, get some item, rescue somebody. Yet yeah, I've never actually made this like a camp. It's not something you see very often. Some people have made tents, I've made tents, but actually a camp. This is useful. In my head when I was building it, I was making sure that the pieces were generic enough that they could be used for all sorts of, you know, baddie camps. Gnolls, goblins, hobgoblins, bugbears, kobolds, whatever kind of low level baddie that your party may have to uh, face up against on their home turf, this little set is gonna be absolutely perfect for. Usually I'd start by making my base or main structure for something like this, but this time around I decided to instead start by gathering a bunch of suitable bits. I wanted this set to represent a semi-permanent larger camp where the baddies had settled in a bit, which meant it needed to be populated by a bunch of supplies and just general stuff. Once I had enough bits, I grabbed some scrap foam, just larger cutoffs that I could use for making stone bases. And since I wanted this camp to be more of a settlement than a nomadic moving tent city, I wanted the bits and the shelters to be sitting on rocky outcroppings. It just seems like every time a bad guy camp is described in an adventure module, it's in a craggy, rocky setting. But the great thing is that rock bases can also be dropped in anywhere. A forest, a snowy tundra, hell, even as islands. I used my handheld hot wire cutter to start shaping some of the foam into stone. I wasn't quite sure what kind of shapes I wanted yet, so I just made a bunch. Big rocks, cave entrances, small boulders, and layered stepped pieces. I came to the conclusion that the layered step pieces would work best for what I was trying to achieve here, and that the singular stone chunks wouldn't be so great. That's okay though, they could just be put aside and used another time. I wanted to do the cut, scrape, brush, heat gun method that I used when I recently made a bunch of modular hellish looking stones. I love the texture that method gives, but honestly, I just wasn't in the mood for doing it. It's a bit of an involved process and one that is really messy. So after a while, I decided since these would be covered in a lot of stuff, I could probably get away with a simpler approach. So I just did a minimal cutting and wire brushing followed by a heat gun. This doesn't produce as nice of a texture, but it's more than good enough for quick scatter that's going to be covered in a bunch of things. I used some more of those thin dollar store MDF sheets and laid out the bases that I then cut with a jigsaw and beveled the edges with the palm sander. I left myself a lot of ground space around them so that I could place items and tent supports on them. And I mixed up some modeling compound to cover the bases with. And this time around, I mixed in some black ink. One issue with modeling compound is that over time, small pieces can chip off and that leaves bright white dots or spots on your dark terrain that are really obvious. I figured the addition of some ink would be a simple way to alleviate that problem. Small chips just wouldn't be as noticeable with it. With all of the natural elements in place, I could start making some ramshackle wooden support systems for the animal hide tents. I ran into a small issue when I started placing some of the bits on the ground cover. I wanted to just impress them into the soft modeling compound, but I had used some compound from Geek Gaming Scenics rather than sculpt a mold and forgotten just how much faster it hardens. This is usually a good thing as it keeps things moving faster, but it meant that I couldn't squish the bits into place very easily. Eventually the bases were well covered in junk and I added a bit of Vallejo texture paste to the smooth top surfaces of the foam. These two pieces alone would not make a full camp. It needed some tents that I could just move around as well. I grabbed some balsa wood and made some simple frames for more of a lean-to style tent. This was actually pretty fun to construct and I took my time and enjoyed the process of shaping the wood and making nice notched joints. Today's video is sponsored by my good friends at Arch Villain Games. Each month, their Patreon releases a new themed set of incredible fantasy miniatures that you can print at home. The models are pre-supported, taking the most difficult part of home printing out of the equation. My favorite thing about Arch Villain in particular are just how dynamic and detailed their sculpts are. I don't always want excessive detail on a model, but when I do, Arch Villain delivers. It's not even that they sculpt detailed models that's so impressive. It's that they do so in a way that translates really well to home printing. The details actually come through. 
And with so many options, it's equal to a massive box of injected molded plastic minis. This makes them impressive for game masters to use in their RPGs or for players to run in their armies. But this also makes them perfect candidates for people really into display painting, something not all print providers are well suited for. This month's set is great for building up a collection of lower level baddies for new character adventures, or for intimidating bosses, or for monsters in skirmish games like Frostgrave. The price absolutely cannot be beat and it's worth every single penny. I'll put a link in the video description so you can go join up for yourself. Thank you so much Archibald for always providing awesome inspirational models and for sponsoring these videos. If you've kept up with my recent videos, you know I love this technique for making animal skins for tents. Just mix some glue with water, just regular PVA glue, about 50-50, but it doesn't have to be exact. Then using regular construction paper, you just dip it in the glue, crumple it up, and apply it to create a really believable looking tent material. I love it. The only downside to this process is that it takes quite a while to dry. Basically, you gotta let it dry overnight. But other than that, it's great. It still surprises me just how durable it is once dry. I highly recommend you give this a shot at some point. The silver lining to having to wait for the paper to dry is that it gave me a little bit of extra time to mix up some green stuff and make a bunch of animal tusks to further decorate the shelters. I primed these with my favorite rattle can primer, and I'm a big advocate for using spray paint on foam, as, as long as you're cautious. Unfortunately, there were two things working against my efforts for a safe spray here. One is that it was raining outside, so I had to spray inside my spray booth, which meant I couldn't get the same sort of distance I normally would. The bigger problem though was that my cans were basically empty. This meant closer spraying and more solvent. This caused a tiny bit of melting, but worse is that I didn't actually have enough spray paint to finish, but it was rock texture, so I didn't care. That's why whenever you take the risk of spray painting foam, what really matters is that it's something that, you know, won't be critical if it melts a tiny little bit, because there's always a small chance of error. So I finished the black off with some airbrush primer, then I did a zenithal highlight with white ink, and then I could get to work doing all of the colors with acrylic inks. I wanted the stone to look natural and stand out from all the browns of the objects and the tents. So I went pretty bold doing a splotchy coat of rich blues and greens to give some dynamic undertones. This looked a bit strange at first, but I knew it would dry more subtle and would be completely neutralized with coats of earth tones and washes on top. The rest was just done with a mix of sepias, umbers, and raw siennas. And these are just regular acrylic artist inks. I did try something a little bit different though at the end. I highlighted the tents with a mix of white ink and sepia ink. Now most of the inks that I use are totally translucent and they rely on the zenithal highlights for the bright spots. But by mixing some color with the white ink, which is opaque, it meant that I could apply a more solid highlight that actually showed up. I even broke out the just plain white again to do some highlighting on the rocks. This way I wouldn't need to do as much dry brushing after, which would be kind of tricky with all those little bits glued all over the place. Some elements like the metals and the bones and the tusks needed a quick coat of just brush paint to get the details out. But after that, things were ready for a wash. So I set out some oil paints and some odorless thinner and got to work doing my oil washes. I was a little more deliberate this time around with what color washes went where. I used a rich reddish brown for the wood and more yellowy ochre tones for the bones and the tents. And for the black wash on the rocks, I actually mixed in a little bit of blue just to give it a slightly different tone. The final painting touch after the washes were dry was a little bit of rust effects. This is my favorite rust effect I've ever used. You just apply it and it undergoes some kind of really fast chemical reaction that creates a very realistic looking rust effect with lots of variation to it. I wanna show this product in some more detail sometime, maybe on something bigger, but for now, I'll put a link in the description where you can get it for yourself because it is absolutely magic in a bottle. Now, overall, I think this set turned out pretty great. It's gonna find a lot of use for RPG gaming, but really I can just throw it on the table with some other terrain for skirmish gaming too. It's gonna mix perfectly with some of my past projects like my Viking treehouse, my ogre tent, and my swamp scatter terrain. But really, put it in a forest, put it on a water battle mat, put it wherever and it's gonna work just fine. 
This was pretty easy to build and was also a great way to use up random bits from the bits boxes so that, you know, they could fulfill their actual gaming destiny. That's it guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button, let me know in the comments section below. I really hope it inspires you to build something for yourself. If you wanna pick up some tools or supplies for your own hobby needs and help the channel in the process, you can do so by doing your shopping on blackmagiccraft.ca. There I have my essential equipment page where I link to the stuff that I use regularly. You can buy it, shopping through those links helps support the channel. There's an even better way you can help support this channel and help me keep making videos and uh, that's by joining the Black Magic Craft Patreon. I'd love to have you as the newest member of the Black Magic Craft Fellowship. That's it. I'll uh, see you next week.